This is being broadcast uh, live at the RMLD's office at 230 Ash Street, Reading, Massachusetts. Uh, live broadcasts uh, are available only in Reading due to technology constraints. Live broad um, this meeting is uh, videotaped for distribution to the community, t community TV stations in North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. The RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment at the discretion of the chair on items on the official agenda as well as on items not on the official agenda. We ask that all questions or comments from the public be directed to the chair and that all parties, including members of RMLD Board, act in a professional and courteous manner when addressing the board or responding to comments. Once recognized by the chair, all persons addressing the board shall state their name and address prior to speaking. It is the role of the chair to maintain order in all public comment or ensuing discussion. I would just like to introduce some, uh, first of all, acknowledge that uh, we accepted the resignation today of uh, Bob Soley, a longtime commissioner, and Bob has moved out of the community, and we thank him for his years of service. And uh, we will be looking for, uh, and the selectmen looking for applications for a replacement. I would also like to recognize CAB Representative Dennis Kelly. Uh, we have Craig Murray from the FinCom. No, no. What did I do? Okay, sorry, my fault. Uh, Bill Brown. Yep. Um, and Chris Pollard from uh, Ruben and Rudman. Uh, John Stempek will be board secretary tonight. So, oh, and uh, last but not least, uh, Colleen O'Brien literally in the last few minutes had a family medical emergency, and uh, during our uh, policy committee meeting, she literally had to run out to deal with a uh, breaking family medical emergency, literally. Um, so we hope that everybody is okay in, in uh, Colleen's family. And playing the role of the general manager tonight is Hamid. Yes, and Hamid <laughs> will serve uh, in that role and will speak, <laughs> will speak for, uh, for Colleen. <laughs> Um, so the first item on our agenda is some discussion of a uh, town meeting warrant article 14. I did reach out to the selectmen and ask them to come and uh, speak to us and have a conversation. The article um, is, you know, we didn't know that this was being put on the warrant. We've had a lot of conversations with them, um, but this was a surprise, so I invited them to come. They're not here. John Arena did email me earlier that he couldn't make it. Um, I think before we, any of us say something, I'm very happy that, that Craig is here because the, the Warren article requests that FinCom uh, investigate the department. So, Craig, if you're open to coming up and we can, we can talk to you, please, please sit up here and uh, take the microphone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I might start with just a couple of comments to frame the discussion and then sure. ask you uh, a couple of things. Um, so, you know, tonight we... Um, we expect to be voting on a uh, new equipment disposal policy that will greatly tighten any future disposal of equipment. Um, a policy that was in place for a decade and probably a lot more than that allowed um, equipment, including trucks, to be uh, offered for free to town managers and to DPW managers. And uh, then if they didn't want them, it provided that the, an ad be placed in just the local newspaper once and that it go to the lowest bidder. After that, there's the discretion of a middle manager to award the bid. Um, as you all know by now, in April, uh, three trucks were attempted to be disposed of in this way that four town managers, the four DPW managers didn't want them. Uh, they went to bid and then an employee uh, put in some very low bids and he won. And it was awarded by uh, the, you know, a middle management layer. There's a lot of problems with that. Um, it seems apparent to me that the, 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 the number was low. Um, not a lot was done to you know, make sure that we appraise them. Um, and, but the, uh, the fact of the matter is once it came to our attention, you know, this, this very strong action was taken to resolve it. Um, mm -hmm. We actually got the trucks back. Um, there was a huge amount of work done. Uh, we, we immediately started reforming our policies which could have been done for 10 or 20 years here by, by former boards or including some of us, including me. Um, but it's getting done, you know, tonight. Uh, so, you know, we've done, you know, we're a self-governing body and we've done all we can, uh, including cooperating with the town accountant who we worked with extensively. You know, everything she asked for, we gave her and we're a public agency and those records are available to you. They're available to the town accountant. They're available to anybody who comes in and asks for them. So already it seems to me that FinCom has the ability, should you want to, to, you know, to ask us anything, and we'll work with you as we work with Sharon Ekstrom. So with that preamble, did I, did I adequately cover the uh, basic synopsis? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, no, I think uh, just 
Yeah. Steve, I think you said it, but make sure it's heard. So the reality is there was no violation of policy. We had a policy that was overdue for revamping. Yeah. And uh, right. based on this occurrence, we've done that, and I think that the evidence is, will be presented. That, that's true. That's you know, that is true with, you know, with the one caveat that we, that we uh, don't have to accept a bid. And if it's very low, we didn't have to accept it. So there's, there's one place where I think we can own up to. At the middle management layer, we could have said, you know, that's, maybe we can look at getting more than that. Mm -hmm. So we've corrected it. Um, I think what's important is when something happens, you see how quickly you, you take action to make sure everything is drum tight. I hope we do that tonight. So with that long preamble, please tell me, what's your interest and what's the article well, about? Um, the town manager brought um, brought the finance committee up to speed with this yep. issue back in, I believe, it was in July. Yep. Um, at a recent meeting, which I think occurred uh, oh, a week or two ago, we were brought this this matter with the uh, the town warrant was brought to our attention, uh, and we were asked to vote on um, Article 14 and Article 15, and they were passed by the finance committee. Okay. So they will go on the warrant. Um, I don't know a lot of the behind the scenes. Um, all we've been filled in by the town manager. That's really, that's all I know. I've read what I've read in the papers. Sure. I've heard some stories, uh, but that's about it. Okay. Yeah, can I comment too? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, so I, I, I guess my reaction to that is it would have been helpful for me as a commissioner to have had the opportunity to have a discussion prior to something going right. on yes. a warrant. Uh, right. We met in July with uh, the uh, chair of the selectmen and uh, one or two other towns representatives and right. thought had a very healthy and productive discussion about what needed improvement and I left feeling very positive that we had some good collaboration uh, but between that moment and now to see it on the town warrant is is a little troublesome just in terms of the the sense of uh, collaboration in terms of resolving it because I, right. I concur with Dave's comments I mean we we were on schedule to review all of the policies that which we also indicated uh, and are all available on the website which we pointed right. out to uh, the town representative so it just it just uh, my two cents is I think the uh, the theme here needs to be collaboration not confrontation and sure. uh, I apply that to my own business uh, that I am uh, involved in, as well as to uh, the other boards that I am part of. Yeah, just to echo, just to echo a little bit on that too. Um, you know, the first time I saw this is actually when it made the warrant. Um, I know, as a former finance committee chairman myself, way back in the dark ages. <laughs> um, you know, whenever something was discussed in front of the finance committee. Uh, when I was chairman, I always made sure that the people who, would, who were going to be discussed about knew about it and got invited. Right. And I also, when I, you know, being the former chairman for life of the bylaw committee, I also had that. I was chairman for life of the bylaw committee for 27 years. And, you know, to suddenly not even, and, and the selectmen have also not come down here. Anybody's come down here and even spoken to us about this. Right. This is the first time we're seeing it is when it's in the warrant. You know, communication and collaboration on this is just, has not been good. Sure. It would have been nice. Again, I was at that meeting that Tom was at at, the, at the, that Thursday meeting, and I thought we had a pretty good session, and okay, you know, we, we realize there's changes to be made, and we've made changes. So. I'd like to make a comment as well. Sure. And uh, I was also at that meeting, and I thought we had a great dialogue, and we all. Is this uh, the policy green. committee meeting? Uh, yes. <coughs> yes, yes. Uh, John and Sharon mm -hmm. there. The J okay. John Arena and uh, Sharon Angstrom. And I, I felt exactly the same way. So uh, that we were making progress, we're going to make address all these different issues. And in, in um, many of the um, board of selectmen over time have sat over here with us as well, sure. and they've been here. And yet the pol same policies were in place. So we're all kind of tarred the same way. Um, the thing that was troubling to me about the September second meeting of the selectmen was the use of the word investigation. It was used 12 times in 12 minutes. Investigation, to my ears, sounds like something there was wrongdoing that was, occurred, and nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, we're all on the same side of the fence here. We're all trying to do the right thing. But so I would suggest maybe using a little bit different of the Queen's English when addressing us would be a very appropriate thing. And, and it's not a moot point that I make that. I'm not trying to be funny. It's 
that investigation implies um, maybe or reckless accusations could affect our credit rating, which could then ripple back through to much higher rates that we would pay, all of us as individuals, and would greatly outweigh any paltry savings from some surplus material that we happen to get rid of. So that's a key concern in my mind is we're being incredibly suboptimal in terms of chasing this when we're all trying to do the right thing and we're missing the most strategic thing of all. So I'm very, very concerned about that uh, in terms of, quote, an investigation, which I think is exactly the wrong word to use. Um, the other comment I'd like to make is that um, <clears throat> And I was very surprised, and, I, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll quote it because I don't want to get it wrong. Um, Selectman uh, Marcy West stated that the arm, quote, the RMLD has too much autonomy, unquote. Um, you know, we're, as commissioners, I think we're extremely surprised by that because Marcy sat with us about a year ago, and we all know Chapter 164, which mandates that we are independent and we have autonomy for very specific reasons, and it's state mandated that we have that for many of the reasons we just talked about here tonight. Um, and so to express the surprise that we have uh, too much autonomy, I'm, I'm just, I don't understand it, and I don't think it's up to the Reading Board of Selectmen to judge our autonomy. It's, it's not in their right to do that. If they would uh, care to read it, we'll send them over copies of it from the state, and I think that would be fine. But you know, at the end of the day, uh, I agree with, I think, with the other commissioners. We're all on the same side of the fence. We've got a lot of things we're trying to do, L much better things to work on. Um, I know uh, C C Colleen O'Brien, for example, has been working with the, on, on um, not just the town of Reading, but uh, we've asked her to work with the other communities that we serve as well uh, for the, on the economic development committees to try and bring new businesses to our area, trying to leverage the fact that we've got low electricity rates to increase employment and tax revenue. And that's what we think ought to be the focus, not, you know, not right. this, this you know, thing about that we've already corrected in terms of surplus equipment. So you can tell we're a little surprised and uh, upset perhaps about how this transpired. And we don't understand it because we've been trying to be extremely cooperative. So yeah, I'd like to uh, just, okay. if I may, Dave, uh, sure. uh, as a final comment, uh, I've been on a uh, commissioner for about five months, and I, my biggest concern going forward here is uh, I've had the opportunity to work with Colleen. I, I think the town and RMLD is very fortunate to have what I consider to be a highly professional general manager, and uh, not perfect, but uh, anyone that's perfect, uh, you know, can leave the room now. <laughs> <laughs> leave, leave town meeting in a few weeks from now. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've been uh, really impressed in a short period of time with what she's done in terms of revamping her organization, labor relations, uh, employee development, uh, focus on the future, growth, environmental uh, initiatives, uh, and you know, just a to me a real strong uh, desire to grow the business where it can be grown and to operate uh, very cost-effectively. That being said, I, you know, I, I think I speak for all the commissioners. Uh, I think the, 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 and I just caution everyone because those kinds of general managers don't come around every time. They don't in my business and I'm pretty sure in all of our businesses. So uh, we need to be careful in terms of how we manage this singular issue that it doesn't drive someone uh, away from what I think is a great opportunity for all of us. And I'd close by saying, you know, I think to me, the keynote is collaboration. We've expressed our disappointment, but we're committed to collaborate with the town uh, and to work together to make this an effective and efficient operation uh, for our MLD for the benefit of Reading, but also the other communities that we serve. Thanks, Tom. Um, so you're you're the only person who's shown up. So <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm afraid. Yes, you're I'm afraid. That's the way it works. Going to happen. Uh, yeah. I really. I'm, What's that? Yeah, right. yeah. Um, you know, I'm glad to see that that you've moved forward and made some made some changes, which uh, you know I think everyone's glad to see that. Um, as far as uh, what's going on behind the scenes, I don't know. I can't answer for the selectmen. Uh, I've been a member of the finance committee for six months. Yeah. I know a little bit about your business, but very you know very little. Um, I, and I, as I said, I, I've 
known uh, a little bit about the situation from the town manager and what I've read in the newspapers. So I really can't comment other that's than that. That's fine. That's so really, I'd like to that's all I know. That's fine. I'd like to understand. Um, I'm basically familiar with what uh, FinCom's role, but fin FinCom's an independent body, right? You, you're impaneled by the selectmen, yep. right? But then after that, you c you have free reign to do what you think needs to be done as a committee to investigate town finances, including RMLD finances. Right. But you're, but you're independent, am I correct? That's, that's a, okay. according to the bylaws, yes. Okay, so you're independent. So, and you already have the power to come in and say, hey, I want to look at the RMLD's uh, payroll or whatever it might be. So I guess what I wonder then is, why would the selectmen put a town meeting on our article sort of telling you what to do if you're already, if you're, A, if you're supposed to be dependent, what's, what's that about? Well, that the bylaws were amended. You know, it yeah. uh, will be a, well, potentially amended depending on how, how town meeting votes, but that's part of it. If you, Article 14 and 15, there's two articles there. Okay. To give the, uh, to give us greater powers and then to uh, ask for sure, but you, uh, my, yeah. my understanding, and we do have an uh, eminent lawyer in the room. Is it your understanding, Chris, that FinComs are, are they independent, are they already independent and empowered to do such investigations as, or looks at records as they may deem fit? Yeah. He should probably take the, yeah, take the mind, mic. Take Craig, the if mic. I just ask that yeah, question, sure. then please We're all come back. back. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Sure. Just kind of move over for a minute. <laughs> well, before, before, you t before you step down, let me just ask you one thing. Is there yeah. something that you know you want from RMLD at this no, point? No, not this, not this point. Is there no. a reason that FinCom it by itself has seen fit that you would like to look from from our MLD that you know of now? No, I can't. I can't answer I mean, that. Do you I have a sense that. that we haven't given everything we we? I'm not aware the, of any the situations. Chair and answer, answer asked for. Okay. Okay. Can't that, answer that question. That helps to know that. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Thank you. And I am I am the liaison, so I, that's that's okay. my new. I'm I'm new to this. I'm, well, the, new, I'm the new ro the liaison. New come every come every <laughs> month. Makes a new person. Yes, every month. Yeah. Glad every to teach you. Sorry. I want to speak too. Okay. Fine. When you get to it. So to that question, is it, does a FinCom already have the ability to do, look at RMLD records and town's records without somebody telling them or voting them to do it? Um, the, because the RMLD is a public entity and subject to the public records law, um, the FinCom, the Selectmen, the Conservation Commission, um, good-natured citizens um, have the right to request copies of public records um, and to investigate um, investigate or sure. review okay. the records of the RMLD and make reports as they see fit um, based on those documents. Okay. Um, then, so leaving it right there, they already have the ability to do, to come in and look at our records. So I just, I, I'm just trying to see what, what does this article even do that they can't already do? That's not clear to me. Okay. Not me neither. So I think it's important that town meeting be told that. Mm -hmm that here's an article that doesn't actually do anything that they can't already do. So, Guys, um, you have a what should we get uh, Bill up? Yeah, we're gonna get Bill. Uh, that's all, Chris, that's the only question yeah. I have. Yeah, that was Bill, it. come on Anybody up. Else? Thank I'll, you, Mr. Chair. Okay. I'll cede to Bill and then I, I would like to speak. I will cede to my good friend, Mr. Brown. <laughs> um, good evening. If you gentlemen have picked up your warrant for the town meeting, uh, the background in that states that the FinCom does not have any control over you people because it is, it's an advisory to town meeting only. Hmm. And I will tell you, quite frankly, I will not vote for this article. Okay. I might uh, vote for the amendments because I think they make some sense, but I will not vote for this article and based on that. And from what I can read from 164 and having sat in your seat for a year, uh, I don't think the town has any ability to do that. And that's one of the things Mr. Pacino and I uh, went around and around a little bit over the uh, charter change, and that's why some of the wording in the future charter changes uh, reflects that. Yeah. Well, thank you. I mean, Great. I, I guess I, I find a lot of this mysterious. I mean, mm -hmm. we had a, an issue that came up and we fixed it. Uh, it want to move on we have a lot of important things to do um, Bill has another comment so, too. sorry Bill I didn't know you were here. yeah I, th I think you guys have fixed an awful lot but I think perhaps a letter to the ratepayers and what you've done might yep. help yep, right. lift that cloud exactly. a little bit thank you know. that's a great idea yeah we need better There's a lot of uh, rumors if you will and I get a lot of them mm. uh, 
-hmm. And I think that they should be cleared up. And I, and, and again, sitting there for a year, I'm probably responsible for part of the policy. <laughs> 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 we'll okay. mention that in the article. Thank you, Bill. I know there, there, is, there is one more issue that, that I want to bring up at this point. If this goes forward, uh, the department is going to have a cost on this. This is going to be an expense to the department. There's going to be time. There's going to be effort. There's going to be paperwork that's going to have to be assembled. Um, I'm very concerned about that uh, because, I mean, I don't know if, you know, not everybody understands the finances of this, of this entity. You have to remember there's rates and then everything comes off it. The bottom line of this entity is zero, absolute zero. If we incur additional expenses, we're either going to have to raise the rates to the customers or we're going to have to take it out of construction funds and potentially lessen the reliability of this department. Those construction funds maintain the lines. Now, I don't think, you know, if you go to an industrial customer in Wilmington, and remember, 60% of your, of your load is outside of Reading. I don't know if anybody's actually gone to the industrial customer up in Wilmington and asked them if they think this is a good idea. I kind of doubt it. Um, so I am very concerned about that cost, and I don't want that cost passed on to those rates ratepayers out there. I think it's very unfair that they're asking to be paid for this if they don't want it. Uh, I'm proposing, that it's when it's appropriate, that I'm going to make a motion that any cost the department incurs on this will be deducted from the payment to the town. This, this commission has the right to do anything we want to do with that payment to the town, that below the line payment, and Chris will back me up. And so my motion is going to be, when it's appropriate, that any, any cost incurred by this department will be deducted from the payment from the town. I do not want to uh, lessen the reliability, and I do not want the addition of the customers to pay for this. I think it's very unfair to ask the customers to pay for this, especially where, you know, 60 percent of the customers are outside of Reading. They're not in Reading. So when the appropriate time, Mr. Chairman, is I, I will make that motion. Um, to the costs, actually, it's worth just getting out into the public that since this whole matter began, we've had a lot of inquiries from the town, and, and they've really necessitated us going to Chris and asking him for advice and opinions. Uh, there's been a lot of staff hours to, to pull records, and some of it's necessary, but Chris, can I just ask how many hours do you think you'll be billing that's relative to questions that have been raised vis-a-vis -vis Article 14 and vis-a-vis Selectman inquiries about our truck uh, question, roughly. Not to put you on the spot, but I just want to give the public a no, sense of the cost. I don't know if that's. I don't know if the, you you're know, comfortable you with that? Don't put them on. Don't put them on the spot. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I'm not sure of the okay. collective number. Okay. Right. Right. It could it's, be. It's going to be yeah. thousands of dollars. Maybe, maybe in the five figures. Um, so I just, I mean, for a, a truck's worth a, a few grand maybe or a few hundred dollars, we've expended probably a five-figure sum on, on legal fees that were necessitated by various inquiries, including this, and um, staff time, many hours of staff time to handle. I mean, I'm just saying, it's not like it's not valuable, but there's a point beyond which we've fixed this and we have to move on. It just becomes we're just kind of... It's, it's really suboptimal. Yeah, yeah we're just, just sort of cannibalizing Let's focus on the big picture. And I don't think anybody, uh, I'm a journalist by background, and I think all these people here are good people. I don't, I don't get a bad feeling. And I think people are really trying to make things uh, run leaner and better. So, and I'm, thank you for coming and taking the full force of this. <laughs> <laughs> we're very sorry. And I just want to cap my, uh, cap my remark. Phil made something I think that was very profound. I think when these issues come up, whether they get presented to us at a FinCom, I, you know, it's a lot easier for us to work together and resolve problems. Uh, you know, I'm a town meeting member. Uh, Phil is. It's a, it's a process that uh, works, but you know, it, it's a lot easier and better. And the town pays us. <laughs> uh, you know, they don't pay us, but they ask us to serve to represent all the citizens. And our job should be to solve problems and not to have to bring them in front of, uh, you know. Uh, town meeting to resolve if they can be fixed otherwise. Dennis, do you, would you anything you'd like to add to any of this? Um, 
No, I'm taking a lot in. I'm, you know, I can understand the cost, like Phil's saying. Yeah. I'd be interested to know what that cost is, because um, obviously, you're, you know, you're saying you take it off the Reading's payment. Yeah. Um, you know, I understand that a lot of this has been around the trucks. I think it opened up questions of what else, and I think, like people have said, a lot of rumors happened, so it made people just start questioning things, and I think it just kind of snowballed, and that's what sure. got it to where it is now. That's for sure. Um, and, you know, having an understanding of what the policy was, where it's going, um, helps understand that people are watching it. Yeah. Okay. So I think we might have exhausted that topic. Let's move on. Yeah, why don't we move on here? Why don't you want the motion? Let's have a motion. I, I, think I, will, I will move that uh, should town meeting vote to instruct the finance committee that there will be an investigation, that any cost incurred by the, RML, the RMLDs um, by the RM, by the, uh, the Reading Municipal Light Department, uh, we be to be deducted from the payment to the town of Reading in the current year. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Opposed? And the motion carries four to zero. Craig, I ask that you carry that message back to the town, please. I suggest that. So I, I want the town to know what the stakes are, quite truthfully, up front. Okay? Yeah. Please stick around, though, because actually when we get through <laughs> all this, there's actually some things about the future and about our future business model that really could be we could use expertise from FinCom <laughs> that is quite apart from all of this. Um, so I hope you stay for the next 20 minutes or so. <laughs> Thank you. You could um, stay longer than that, too. Well, however long <laughs> it takes. Um, so our next uh, item on the agenda is the uh, report of the policy committee, right? Um, which just a few moments ago yep. took okay. action. Okay. Phil Very is good. the chairman of the Mr. policy chairman? committee. Mr. Chairman? Okay. Uh, the policy committee met at 6.30 tonight to, uh, we have a revised policy uh, that has been part of, made part of the agenda tonight. It's out on the website. Uh, the uh, policy committee reviewed the policy, uh, the changes. Uh, we felt it was good. We, we approved it. We did make one change in the policy, and that was at the very end. One additional change. One additional change, yes. We approved all the other changes. I should, I should say that. The only other change we made in the very last line where it says the general manager shall make such reports as required by the RMLD Board of Commissioners, we said the general manager shall make uh, such reports monthly to the RMLD Board of Commissioners so that the RMLD Board of Commissioners are informed each month as to the the surplus in terms of that as to where it would okay. and so that we're aware of that. Can you, if there is anybody watching, do you want to just pull it up a level of abstraction and say, you know, what have we actually changed in our policy vis-a-vis -vis the disposal? Yeah. Maybe just list what, the, what, what are the major changes compared to what it used to be? You should have told me that in advance. I could have prepared better. Well, well <laughs> so at a high level, we can... <laughs> at a high level, it's, it's at using a high level. independent agencies in the right. first place to do the evaluation of any of the surplus. Right. Mm -hmm. And including things such as eBay or soliciting bids, Craigslist, eBay, whatever is appropriate out there that we're using today. Or not using today, I, sh I should say. Uh, and with the right to obviously offer it to town, to town managers um, in the other towns. Uh, that was retained, as I recall. Uh, and then uh, the disposal will, will proceed along whatever is the highest bid. But there's a, there are many procedures that, that go along with that, and that's part of the issue that we were discussing is that it's going to require significant more effort to make sure that whoever is doing the bidding conforms to um, the right set of constraints, essentially. No employees uh, will be allowed to bid. No commissioners will be allowed to bid. None of our families or extended families will be allowed to bid on any of these. Uh, so we're basically trying to make sure that none of that happens uh, ever again. So it's much better marketing of surplus material to ensure we get a good price, right. uh, banning employees from, from bidding, and a number of other steps. Uh, we went through a lot of rounds on this and um, mm -hmm. got expert opinion uh, right. from, from council. Mm -hmm. And I think we may have a model for right. um, in the top dollar for yeah. the public's property. Yeah, and one of the other things I want to mention is that there were anybody who made a comment was listened to and was included as part of the, the final policy. Right. So whatever comments were made. If I may, as far as the trucks are concerned, 
We waited on the trucks. We've got them back. They're over in the yard. And now that we've approved this, they will go through this process to find out what the true value is, as opposed to the conjecture that's been floating around right. and the rumors about right. inflated values for rusty old trucks. So hopefully we'll have something to report on that at our next and meeting. I, and I would hope with other than the trucks actually goes and takes a look at the trucks before they value them. Correct. So with you that. Know, one added point I would yeah. say, which mm -hmm. is part of this, which I think is very helpful, is there's a categorization of the surplus by whether it's scrap or valued uh, from a certain level of dollars, which I think provides additional guidance and oversight where needed. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a lot of discussion on it. It's been aired in a couple of. Right. Go ahead, okay. Well, I'm ready to make a motion whenever you're, whenever you're ready, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. I was just going to say I think we're ready for a vote. Yeah. Uh, I'll move that the um, I'll move on the recommendation of the policy on the, on the uh, board's policy subcommittee that the uh, RMLD policy number two, revision four, surplus materials, be uh, be adopted. With that one addition? Right, change. with the one addition. With the one addition to the policy committee. Came so up. moved. We have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? And the vote is four to zero. Four to zero. Okay. Very good. The policy has been passed. Uh, earlier today, I just want to acknowledge that I did get an email from uh, John Arena suggesting that we should harmonize disposal uh, policies with the town. That may be a good idea, and if if there's a need, we can look at uh, if there's a way to improve this. We will certainly take a look at that and um, and do so. Um, if there's a good idea, we're always going to be open to that. Yeah, I mean, I, just to, to, to note on that, I think uh, based on the circumstances, I think there's a high degree of urgency to get the policy in Absolutely. place so that RMLD can right continue. Well, part to of the, and part of the reason was moving on. Uh, there are some materials on site that that have. I think some toxic materials in them that we need to be disposed of. We've, we've administratively frozen disposal for the past several months, and we need to actually get things off the property. Right. Um, so we needed to take action, and we wanted to get this get this done. Okay. Um, the policy two has now been passed. Right. So where are we now? Got to review. Okay. Your specialty. My okay. spe my specialty. Uh, Mr. Brown's too. Yep. Mr. Brown's too. <laughs> and Bill. Okay, you ready? Okay, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Bill. All right. Basically, where we're at at this point, and, and I'm glad to see Mr. Brown is here too, my, my good friend. My good right honorable friend, I think, as they say in England. <laughs> uh, basically, where we are at this point is the uh, there's been uh, uh, what I've given you tonight is you have the original one here that is actually what the present changes that have been made. There is discussion as to further change. Uh, the Rubin and Rudman uh, opinion, legal opinion on what's in the charter has been shared with the committee. There is uh, concern in the committee that um, the way the charter is now written conflicts with section 164 as Rubin and Rudman has written in their opinion. Uh, what you have here in front of you, the, the rewrite that's dated July 29, 2014, was a rewrite made by uh, Mr. Brown. Uh, and basically what it, he asked the committee that uh, would it be appropriate to ask the RML to present it to the RMLD board to get their, to get their comments on it at this point. Now the other one that I've given you, the other one that's dated uh, S September 11, 2014, Bill sent to me over the weekend. And I forwarded that to all you also at this point. You had some more rewrites at this point. Uh, dis, uh, September 10th. September 10th. So, I mean, that's what I'm looking for. I mean, the idea is to, you know, there is some sentiment in, in the Charter Commission, um, and it's contentious, quite truthfully, that the provisions in the Charter are not appropriate. Uh, the adoption, particularly the adoption of uh, 30B, uh, we can't adopt 30B because if you adopt 30B, then you know your purchase power is just going to be killed. I mean, you may have a contract that's only open for an hour, and Jane can speak to that at times. You can't go off and have bids and so forth on that, or you lose that opportunity in terms of that. In terms of that, so and so these are this is the what you see the July 29, 2014 is the write-up Mr. Brown had done. Uh, to try to bring it more back in line with 164 as to what he, what he has done here. So, and I'm looking to the Charter Committee was supposed to meet last Monday. Uh, the chairman failed to post the meeting. Uh, <laughs> and so I don't know if we're meeting this coming Monday. We're, we're, we are? We are? Okay. 
Um, we are probably going at that point, this committee is going to go into overdrive. We're going to meet weekly because uh, we're trying to get to, it'll be potentially the charter revisions will be presented at a January 2015 town meeting. Uh, we thought about November, but November is the, the zoning changes are coming in November. And we didn't want to overload town meeting at that point because they're rewriting all the zoning uh, regulations, the real zoning, uh, the zoning uh, regulations. So it really didn't want to re overload it at that point. And so we're probably starting next week, we're probably starting Monday, we're, we're going to overdrive and meet every week. But we, I need some comments as to where we're going to go if we think this is appropriate and to going forth at this point. Well, I'll give you my comment, if, if you will. Um, and I think the rewrite is, uh, is excellent. And I think it's consistent with what we have under uh, Chapter 164. And in deference to that, that's, that's what we should be doing. I mean, that's what the state law is. And, that's, and it's um, relatively broad in terms of uh, what we can and can't do, uh, which I think is, again, very appropriate so that we can be flexible to meet whatever our needs are, um, as opposed to some of the more um, uh, focused items that are under the uh, home rule charter uh, that were presented. Uh, I prefer certainly the rewrite, and I think it uh, states it very eloquently. Yep. I, would, I would, I, let me, Mr. Chairman, I, I would agree with that. Um, I really do, I mean, I know Bill wrote the, the September 10th, but I really do like the July 29th one uh, because it really, the, the, the final paragraph there is to giving reports, um, I think is very important that, you know, we're, we're, you know, that we go to the finance, we meet with the finance committee ev annually is what we're supposed to, you know, really what I've always thought we should be doing and we should be giving a report to town, the, the November town meeting each year. I mean, those are reports and then, you know, I've always said that, you know, Anybody who wants to come talk to us, come request, and we'll come talk to you. We, we're not hiding anywhere, you know. And that's been the that's been the case in my 28 years of which I've sat on this commission. So, all right. Any other comments from either one? No. So, d Colleen isn't here, obviously. Uh, I mean, in her absence, is this text that's labeled rewrite, rewrite 729.14? Uh, something because I asked her for her opinion and she obviously had to leave in an emergency basis tonight. If you if you're not sure, then let's. Be in its place. We're going to be in its place. No. Okay. No. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I mean, Tom brings an interesting point. Just just to the things that have been taken out of here um, under the present charter, basically the commission appoints the accountant. And under the charter, also the uh, the the department has to use the town auditor. Now, both of those I understand are in conflict with 164. Mm -hmm. And in terms of what Mr. Brown has written on the July 29th meeting, those have been taken out. So, I don't know if you want to go to Chris. Chris. Yeah. I don't really have any substantive comments. Uh, just a couple of you know cleanup points right. when when you're putting it into in, into final. Um, but I think that uh, this language. Um, artfully addresses the issues that we identified uh, in the memorandum that we uh, provided to you on the last draft. Mm -hmm. So you're referring to the rewrite, rewrite 729.14? Rewrite, rewrite 729.14. <laughs> <laughs> Is it your view and, you know, to the best of your ability to represent what Colleen has been advocating and my colleagues here on the board that <coughs> we should vote? Uh, is, it, is it the sense of the board that we vote to recommend that this is the language? Uh, you can, yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah. Okay. Are there oh. what tweaks, what uh, copy editing or tweaks were you going to suggest? Or uh, the Department of Telecommunications and Energy is now the Department of Public Utilities. <laughs> the department formerly known as. <laughs> so strike of telecommunications and energy, and add of public utilities. Right, that's fine. Okay. And what else, Chris? Anything else? Uh, I'm just doing another read. Um, as a as a legal point in the one two third paragraph, 
Um, typically under one, General Laws Chapter 164, Section 56, um, the manager has the right to approve uh, power contracts, uh, but I know in Reading historically um, that has been done a little bit differently and brought to the board um, for their approval and vote, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention um, as you're going through this. Okay, this doesn't make, oh, I, I see, right, including payroll and approval of all. So that's no different from what how we've been operating is right, what you're right. saying. That's correct. Right. Do we see any need to change see, how we've been operating? I see, because it, it now says that the commissioners approve all power contracts. It says that here. Right. It but does. that's not what we do all the time, right? Historically, we request them for your approval. But, but it's right. 2 o'clock and you have a, something you have to buy by 2.15, you don't? Yeah, we, we get your pre-approval. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see. Got it. So that's that's how we handle that. Okay. Well. So, would the motion be that we recommend that the, that this language, as amended with the correct in the DPU, is we're good to go? Uh, just a. I don't think I have the exact words yet, but so if we wanted this to have some flexibility, both in terms of the warrants, but also the contracts, could we say, uh, and has the. In other words, not make it a requirement of approval, but has the ability to or the right to. So, so it becomes a, a something that they can flex with. So if it is a 2 o'clock issue or whatever, the, we, so we have the opportunity to m decide if we want to at a point in time, depending on circumstances. Uh, I think you, you just we just covered that circumstance. I think what Chris is saying is the law says the general manager has that authority. Sure. Right. Well, what if we just say the May approved? I guess that's what I'm trying well, to get at. Is yeah, I mean, you, you actually, if you look at 3.5 on the original there, if yeah. you would, you know, if you look at the paragraph that's there where it says the Municipal Light Board of Commission shall hire the general manager of the, uh, re the uh, Municipal Light Department and set his duties and terms and just replace this paragraph with that one and just leave it. I mean, uh, you know, I don't know if we need to actually get into... Uh, payments of you know approval of contracts because that's covered by 164. Okay. So yeah. Point. Yep. I like that. Yep. Is there a is, that, did, is there a change we need to do? That? Yeah. What I would what I would say is that we 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 remove the paragraph. Sorry, Bill. I'm going to move a paragraph on you. <laughs> that we move the paragraph that says the municipal board of commission shall hire the general manager. That paragraph and approve. That paragraph is deleted. And then we put in its place the municipal light board of commissioners shall hire the general manager of the Reading Minis of the Red of the municipal light department, and set his duties in terms of employment. Period. Because I think that if that the, you know the uh, signing of the warrant and the uh, and the approval of the power contracts is covered under 164. Yes. Right. Uh, given our current management, could we say her slash? His well, under the course. under the charter, her his means her. It's defined as his. It, that, uh, yeah. It, 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 there was a lot of debate answer. about that. <laughs> well, well, all right. If, it, yeah. if there's no if there's no reason to take it out, uh, I, I just assume leave it. But mm -hmm. is it hair splitting, Chris? The his or her? No, the the paragraph removal. Uh, I think Phil's uh, solution is the cleanest solution. And Colleen would say the same thing. I'm think? virtually certain she would. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Fine. Because I mean, you guys talk about this, and I uh, or. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm comfortable speaking for Colleen. Also. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, I just think rather than get to, to right. it's mm -hmm. these are by way of example. I, so I think setting okay. setting the duties and responsibilities is what we should be doing, and then okay. it allows us to make changes if we need to. Right, and we refer to 164 in the, in the second in the 164 in the second paragraph anyway. Okay, and you're you're saying 164 does everything that's what? in that paragraph. That's correct. Bill, Bill, Bill. I don't know if Bill wants to speak. Does Bill want to speak? What if 164? You're fine. If, okay. <laughs> here, here, here's my one caveat. What if the legislature changes 164? Well, then we have to. Then we readdress it. it. Yeah. It would take it would take quite an act to change 164. Let's put okay. it that way. Craig, what do you think? Are you asleep yet? 
okay. It would take quite a change. I mean, even when the, the, the okay. supposed well, deregulation, supposedly they're going to deregulate. I mean, that really, the change they made to 164 is just, it really wasn't deregulation. It was more just restructuring in that case. Dave, is your concern you'd rather be more specific? Cause I yeah, I mean, why not leave it in there? If it's redundant, okay, but it's in there. Jeannie's is shaking. You mean leave in. both in? Huh? Yeah. You think we should cut it? Uh, okay, fine. That, that seals it. We're going to cut it. <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. All right. Um, all right, so let's have a motion. All right, okay. you, you, you um, accept it? Yeah, I'll there? move that we, the Board of Commissioners will recommend to the Charter Committee uh, that the 3.5 that's uh, redone in the seven in the July 29 2014 right right memo uh, be uh, recommended to the Charter Commission with the exception that the third paragraph be removed and the present paragraph that's in the Charter uh, that the Municipal Light Commission shall hire the general manager and set his his duties in terms of employment be adopted in his place Okay, and just to confirm that you're referring to a page that's in our, blue, our book here in case there's any right. dispute of right. yes. what we're talking about. Uh, do we yes. need to further define what we just recommended or no? I think we're, we're good. We're good? I think I captured it. Okay, good. then. So moved. Yep. Mm -hmm. Second. 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 All right, all in favor? That's 4-0. Passes. Hopefully we don't have to talk about the charter again. Uh, it'll, it'll be back. It'll be back. Mm -hmm. It'll uh, be back. I'm glad you folks stuck around. Um, where are we now? And thank you, Bill, for all your Yes, thank you, Thank you. Yeah. Um, the general manager's report. So the general manager's not here. Um, Hamid, because yeah. Hamid is here. Hamid yeah. is playing Hamid. the general manager. Sorry. <laughs> Tonight. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm here to present the report of the status report on the organizational and system reliability study. Uh, just want to stress the uh, fact that, you know, it's not up for vote until October 2nd. Mm -hmm. So you're not voting on this. Listening. Update. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, RMLD's mission is to provide excellent customer service, including competitively priced electricity, still amongst the lowest in the state. As a result of diligence in the areas of power supply risk management, system reliability and flexibility, and overall business efficiency. Strategic mark uh, makers were uh, identified and included in the request for proposals for the said studies. Some of the key uh, scope tar targets the following areas. One, uh, develop a 20 year long term system and reliability plan to include a roadmap which identifies and prioritizes system upgrades, timelines, and cost estimates. Two, develop a long term organizational study that integrates RMLD division qualified staffing levels and skill sets to maximize the efficiency of the utility to meet present and future trends of the electric, electric industry. Three, develop and maintain a fully accurate functional and operational GIS system that can assist in modeling, outage management, uh, proje projecting load growth and sufficient substation capacity for maximizing system reliability and flexibility. Three, seek uh, opportunities for growth in business re revenues including generation development and or, or ownership, expansion of the fiber loop networking, et cetera. Uh, fifth, enhance customer information system to enable customer response for mutual benefits of load management and associated cost savings. Six, maximize system reliability through predictive and preventative maintenance. Seven, uh, support facilitation of economic development and proactively implement uh, marketing strategies to keep rates stable. The organizational study would identify key trends and benchmarks over a 20 year horizon for what RMLD should be delivering to its customers. Recommendations on organizational structure, work processes, the staffing level, salary ranges, uh, career development, and succession plan, performance appraisal system, and physical space. The resource plan will include staffing requirements, budget, and outside resources, criteria for success, detailed work plan, and any policies and challenges uncovered. The reliability plan addresses all issues as they relate to the system reliability, system loss re reduction, adequate substation and feeder capacity, 
system revenue opportunities, including fiber loop assessment, safety, and performance optimization. It includes an assessment of the overall system, physical plant, facilities, and engineering, etc. Future trends of the electric industry is key when undertaking the study. Identification, prioritization, and general cost estimates over a 20-year period focusing on improved reliability, quality, and service. The study will consider and address anticipated policy and challenges slash barriers that may be encountered. The request for proposal was written to have either one professional firm, uh, firm provide both studies or two firms providing and performing one each with integration. An evaluation team was formed to evaluate the proposals based on the firm's qualifications, including years of experience, the staffing, demonstrated studies with proven efficiency improvements, communication and scheduling commitments, ability to meet scope and interviews. The result of evaluation showed two firms highly advantageous, one to perform the organizational study and one to perform the reliability study. A memo for recommendation to award the organizational study to Lidos LLC and their reliability study to Booth and Associates has been provided to the board. A vote to accept the contracts will be on the October 2nd, 2014 agenda. A kickoff meeting from the firms on the board prior to working, uh, work commencing will be scheduled for November board meeting. Thank and that you. concludes the status of the report. Any uh, questions? Thank you. How many? Yes. yes. Um, now, here's where we're going to actually discuss some extremely important uh, matters for the future of RMLB. We've been talking about extremely pick a and things for the last hour, I have to say. What Hamid just said is extremely exciting, and um, the things we're going to do in the future are just, could be transformational to what the company is. Uh, and this is where I hope FinCom, we need your help here. Uh, the high-level story, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the whole model of a distribution grid is under extreme pressure uh, from new technologies, efficiencies uh, that produce declining sales, uh, customers putting in their own generation mm -hmm. from photovoltaics and other technologies, even gener they could be small generators using natural gas. A lot of things are coming in the pipeline in the next decade or 20 years. The time frame, if I'm not mistaken, is 20 years on this study. That's right. We want to know what, what is RMLD in 2034? And I'm saying to you, and I think everybody here would agree it could be a completely different company because we may not be able to make money just buying electricity from somewhere else and selling it. Uh, the transmission costs are going up. This is why when he says generation, it means we need to understand how we can return to our roots and actually generate electricity that RMLD is installing stuff and generating the power right here. That, that building used to do 100 <laughs> years ago. You use that building over Yeah, there? I mean, that, that's what that building is next door. <laughs> that's if you why don't we're know. saving it. <laughs> yeah. It's 100 years ago that since we've been generating electricity. So there's that. And then, uh, and, and, and I submit that photovoltaics is going to be a primary way to do it. The costs are plunging for that. You see them popping up on roofs. And when they do, you got a homeowner spending 15,000 bucks ballpark. About that, the actual cost of the panels might be three or 4,000. Um, and there's a middleman making all that money. Um, and I think we could be the ones doing that. Jane is uh, wincing over here. <laughs> but I, I think there could, <laughs> that there could be a role for the study in really helping us decide what that model is and how we can be doing that. I, I, I think about this offline. I think, you know, where could we put it? Is it just on roofs? Is it just on school roofs? Is it just on our roofs? That's expensive. I think about right-of-ways. We've got to train right away right behind us, going all the way up and down. That's public property. Could we get access to that right away and have solar panels up and down train lines and highways in our district? Um, I'm making all this up. I don't know. <laughs> but there's opportunities out there to think out of the box, engineer a system where we can have generation here cheaply at scale, locally, and, and it's good for all kinds of reasons. So I'm blathering on here. Um, well, I, I think there, that, that um, one, it's good blather, so it's, yeah, it's yeah. Not, not a bad thing. Uh, but the, I think the real issue is, you know, we contribute a lot of money both to our surrounding communities uh, as well as to the town of Reading. And 
if uh, power is, uh, is not being used as much because of the efficiencies or people are doing it themselves, we need to find a way or a mechanism to substitute right. for that and keep the, the revenue flowing to everyone uh, and or that's the high level, yeah. At, at the right. high level. And, you know, yes, we're talking about something maybe 10 years away, but quite honestly, what you're talking about is happening today. I mean, people, I guess solicitations, you probably all do, of the, uh, the people who want to put the solar panels on your house for free, give you the electricity for free, and then, indeed, they get the money from whatever the contracts are with the local utilities. Uh, that doesn't help us. Right. It doesn't help. I mean, us, it's good. It? It's, it, it, it's it's good for society, but it, it's right. bad for our business model unless Correct. we get into that somehow. Right. Correct. Yep. Right. Exactly. Um, so there's that, and then there's all the other things Hamid was talking about involves making the system smarter, which means you can control the peak load, which we have no control over now. We lose money in the middle of the day. Uh, this is now putting in intelligence into the grid to uh, be able to manage that peak load, maybe store electricity, maybe shut some things off remotely thanks to communications. These are really important, and it's very exciting that we're doing. We've got great engineers on staff. Colleen is a great engineer. She has got a mind of a steel trap when it comes to, you know, she's, you can just see the mind working there when it's engineering. It's the same with Hamid. It's really exciting to talk to them. And, and the third one, the, the amazing one to me, we have a, what, 30-mile fiber optic loop. Is, is that about it? Running through the four towns. Sitting there, we do almost nothing with it. This is, could be a potential business generating revenue, selling data to targeted businesses, to town offices, to schools, that, that I'm going to really be annoying and push for this study sure. to find out what that business model is for RMLD. Um, you know, we're going to pay these people a lot of money. How can we, we provision, what is the town spending, do you know what the town spends now on data, for example? You, not that you would, but there's going to be a big number that the town and the schools probably give to Comcast or Verizon for data internet. And meanwhile, RML diesel and fiber loops going 100 yards away from town hall. I mean, it's like, so uh, w we can put these pieces together, and uh, that's what the FinCom and the RMLD should be excited about this, and let's figure this out. you got great business minds and finance minds on FinCom. It really would be. Yes, absolutely. And, and, you know, if, if, the, if these consultants who know this stuff from a different direction come in and meet with the FinCom and you guys are working together, maybe there's a meeting where you think, gee, how could we work this business model out? Where does that fiber spur need to go so that we hit that office building and we have a revenue source from that office building or that hospital or whatever it might be and really get these ideas cooking into practical, implementable, incremental ways to do this and, and monetize. And those ideas, I assume you would also mean to apply to all the, all the towns in the district? Of course. Oh, yeah. Of course absolutely. it would. Yep. They're all spending a lot of money on, on, on data, and if we have a loop going within a certain distance, it's going to be sensible to just see what that would cost. What would it cost to do that, at, uh, that what's it called, a drop, right? Uh, I should be letting Hamid yeah. talk. Um, so anyway, these are just some things. These are the two areas in particular that I hope we can really push on and some of those other things like what should salaries be no offense but uh, it seems like less important than what what are the business models right. and the, the engineering required to support those business models uh, mr. chairman I've done f quite a few of these studies I think the bottom line would be that you know well it's going to provide it's going to bring uh, cost saving measures and it's going to provide a roadmap for the utility to save customers money. Yes. Because once you have the roadmap and you have a plan, yep. that's going to eliminate redundancy yep. and expenditures in the areas that you don't need to, and it's going to bring the focus and attention back on spending in the areas that you need to. Yes. So it's going to be, all in all, it's going to be great for all four communities, and I'm really looking forward to doing this study uh, with the uh, consultants. And I is strongly recommend that, you know, every time when the recommendations, they come out, all four communities to, uh, we can have a presentation that everybody participates and listen to all the good recommendations. Because the future of this industry is, uh, the, in the electrical industry is changing. Yep. I mean, we're going to have to go toward, you know, cost-saving measures like demand-side management right. and distributed generation yep. and also energy efficiency. And that's all we can do because the price of gas is not going down it's going up yep I mean you're gonna be paying more money for the gas and there's and more and more incentive for people more. to so the rates either they're gonna go up if right. the cost go up because it's gonna be passed on to the customer 
the only way you can reduce that would be by energy efficiency exactly. measures, which is going to be the result of this. Yep. Uh, Were you trying to say something, Tom? No, no, I, I think it's great. It's really it's reinventing the business model. It is, and it's Chevy exciting times, and I, that's one, one reason why I want us to be able to clear the decks and be able to focus on this and, and, and have the minds of this organization focusing on these things. They're very exciting. Um, can I just ask you to address briefly, Hamid, the um, the transformer upgrades, and I'm going to summarize it. You tell me if, where I get it wrong. We had old, somewhat inefficient transformers throughout the system, many of them allowed to, to stay in, in service beyond their service life. Yes. Uh, they're less efficient than new ones, and sometimes they fail, and when they fail, it triggers, like, sometimes the oil leaks out, and it triggers. Tell me what some of the costs have been, if you know, for cleanups. Up to now, we have from what we've received, we, uh, we spent close to $45,000. Oh, on and I anticipate the cost to go up to close to probably 100, 150. For cleaning up spilled clean up, oil. Right. And we have a pr transfer, we've implemented the uh, transformer inspection program right. for the Patmon transformers and also overhead transformers. Right. We got approximately 3,300 transformers system wide. Right. Approximately 30% of that, about you know, 1,000 or so. And they should have they been done a long time ago. Yeah, yes, they sh should have been, you know, but uh, we are where we are. We yeah. are going to, you know, uh, correct it. Right. We have uh, 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 appropriate maintenance plans, the, p uh, the proactive maintenance plan in place. We've got seven plans, actually. Right. One of them is transformer in inspection yeah. and replacement. Uh, anything over 20 years old, which we've got about 1,000 of them. Yeah. And you know, we up to now we've had for the past six months or so, we've almost re replaced. Uh, I want to say 2022, mm -hmm. and the number Lots keeps go. going up. Yep. And it's going to be uh, we're going to replace them all eventually. So I just want to the reason I'm I'm bringing this up is anybody who's watching and for our our guests from FinCom, thank you again for coming. Is just to understand that when we have good engineers running the department as we do, top flight engineers. Because we, we let some of these things go in the past, you have transformers that are allowed to be up there a little too long until they fail. You then trigger, as Hummy just said, $100,000 in oil cleanups, sometimes with PCBs in the oil. Then it's a disaster. When you're ahead of the game, as we now are, you're not going to have these problems. Plus, each one gets replaced. It's 5% more efficient. It goes from 95 to 99. Right. That's 5% less electricity that you've had to buy to serve that piece of the grid. So these things are kind of in the weeds as far as does the public understand what this is or, you know, I don't until I, I hear it and I'm like, okay, I get why we have good people running, you know, RMLD. I get how we're saving money and we're saving on, on toxic oil cleanups that we don't have to do. So these are the kinds of things that are happening all throughout the organization now with the new management that we have. Uh, and while they're looking at those big picture things, uh, that, that's kind of what they've been focusing on and a lot of things like that. Um, and we'll be happy to explain that to FinCom when you launch your investigation. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't want to put you on the spot. But uh, that's in quotation fingers. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, it's just um, there's a lot of things like that happening. So anyway. Um, it's good stuff. Uh, yeah. It, all right. I'm, I'm again talking too much. As my Dennis, the, am I talking too much? We can start Very with interesting. You. All right. Um, <laughs> Jane, am I talking too much? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Bill's, okay. Bill's yeah. like, yep. Just one item in a public comment. Um, I don't know if we actually will see Mr. Soli again. Um, I know that he didn't he didn't want stuff when he left the board, was right. his words. Um, and I would just personally like to, and I'm sure maybe the commission would like to thank him for his service. Uh, Mr. Soli and I butted heads many times, uh, but I must say that Mr. Soli was always his own man and, you know, was informed and, even though I disagreed with him many times, he was informed and did bring good things to the board. And I, I just want to thank him for his services. He's out there watching, wherever he may be. Thank you, Bob. Thank, thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> thank you, Bob. <laughs> and that little time I spent with him, he always had the rate payers' uh, interest in mind. Right. So exactly. That's exactly. particularly senior citizens and people who with, uh, of modest correct. means. He was very right. much in uh, thinking about them. Um, is there anything motion else? to adjourn? I guess we are. Uh, do we need meetings? to go? Do we need to go into executive session? We are going to go into executive okay. session. Yes. Session. Do, Gene, do we have to announce oh, the next two uh, bills? Bill?
Right. Wow. Yep. I mean, that property goes, that tiny hangar goes back a long ways, too. There are solar panels back in the woodsy area, too, that you can't see from the, from the street. I so ordered. I'll do that. I'll yeah. get that to you. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Are we going to discuss mediation and union negotiations update? Or is that that? No, that's no, that's okay. not. So let's, let's adjourn and move into executive yeah. session. Then. Well, I, I, you know, we have to state what it is for, and if we're going to, it says in the motion to discuss mediation we can and union we negotiations. We can give brief updates. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're going to move. Did the board go in executive session to discuss mediation and union negotiation update to discuss the deployment of security devices and strategy with respect thereto and to return to regular session for the sole purpose of adjournment? So moved. Second. All, all in favor? Yes, and we stand adjourned. Hold the board. Hold the board? Hold the board. Okay. Uh, Mr. Messino, aye. 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 Give me my pen back. Oh, sorry. You stole my, oh. pen. You stole my pen. <laughs> it's David, it was nice to have the passion. Oh, good. Hello. Speak, and I, it was, you know, it's nice to see that. Oh, good. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear it. I know I talked.